So today we have notes on part two of environmental issues. Last time we talked about two environmental issues, biomagnification and invasive species. And so today we're going to talk about four more. Um, this is also your very last lecture of the entire year. So the one we're going to talk about first is called climate change. And this is the idea that the um, global temperatures are starting to rise on average. The cause of this would be due to the greenhouse effect. And so this is the ability for gases to trap heat um, in our atmosphere. And it's important for this to happen. It keeps our earth warm um, so we can live on this planet and not freeze over. Um, the problem is, is a lot more CO2 is being released faster and uh, that can be taken up by our plants. And so the re release of those fossil fuels is known as combustion. So burning fossil fuels, driving cars, things like that is going to be releasing these greenhouse gases. So impact. So like I said before, um, global temperatures on average, we think will rise by about 4 degrees Celsius by 2100, which is the highest temperatures in the last 30 million years. So yes, there's been times of fluctuation in Earth's um, history, definitely patterns of cooling and warming. Um, the issue is that we are warming our Earth faster than has ever been happened before. So the impact of that 4 degree average temperature rise will cause our ice caps to melt, what we've already been experiencing. Um, as they melt, that means our sea levels will start to rise, and then those communities along the coastlines will be uh, deeply infected, impacted by flooding. Um, across other parts of the world, there'll be intense um, heating, there'll be cooling in other areas. There's really drastic changes and quick changes to temperature. Um, and for these ecosystems and for the organisms that live there, the environment might adapt or change so quickly that these organisms cannot adapt. And so we believe we're probably in one of our largest mass extinctions on the planet. So how can we help to reduce that climate change? Well, that'd be to you know eliminate the amount of combustion that's occurring, re reduce the amount of CO two that's being released. So trying to reduce you know our carbon footprint, carpool more often, bike more often, um, just buying less stuff in general. Everything that we buy came from a factory that was created, had to be you know driven to the place. The store has to use electricity to sell it. So there's a lot of things that go into um, one product, and then possibly looking into other types of power. Next environmental issue we're going to talk about is the ozone thinning. Um, the ozone is made up of O3, three oxygen molecules bonded together, and what the ozone does for us is it protects us from UV light. Um, and so there's a chemical called CFCs. These are released from refrigerators and aerosol cans. Uh, it's called chlorofluorocarbons. And what they do is they interact with the ozone, like we see over here, and a free radical will be released and break down the ozone. Um, these are starting to accumulate in the southern hemisphere, which is where we saw a huge hole starting to appear in our ozone. So if the ozone thins, or if we get this hole forming, we are now going to be more exposed to that UV radiation. And if you know about UV light, this could lead to skin cancer, obviously in humans, but for other organisms as well. So solution for that would be to, you know, ban those chemicals that are causing this problem. And um, it has been banned in a lot of countries. Um, CFC is not banned in all countries, and so like I said before, this really needs to be a global effort to reduce a lot of these issues because we share all the same water, air, and land. Our next environmental issue is acid rain. So this is going to occur when we have combustion. So if you have a little factory down here, a car releasing um, these, these gases into the atmosphere. Those gases are going to then mix with clouds, with water vapor, and then when that rain falls down, that rain's going to be slightly acidic. And where that rain falls, it could damage the organisms there, or possibly kill them. So you can see here on the left, um, a plant being exposed to acid rain. You can see it's starting to kill it off. Um, also, stones and our buildings can be affected by the um, increase of acid rain over time. It could actually break down the stone that you see in that statue. So our solution, like we're seeing with most of these, is just to reduce the, our carbon footprint, reduce and re eliminate as much as we can, um, trying to be sustainable, using you know resources now, but also leaving enough for future generations. So our last environmental issue we're going to talk about is um, ocean plastic pollution. We're focusing on plastic because there's other types of pollution as well, but this, is also, this has been like a hot topic in the news and in certain types of voting recently. Uh, here are some graphic pictures of these organisms that have been very impacted by the use of plastics. 
So what causes it is plastic gets carried out to um, the ocean by wind and rain. So if you think about plastic, um, every single piece of plastic that's ever been created is still on Earth today. Plastic takes a very long time to break down and is not, does not break down very quickly. And um, think about, like, just look around wherever you are right now. There's probably hundreds of pieces of plastic that you are staring at right now. We use plastic in everything. Once that plastic gets um, brought out to the ocean, they kind of end up in what we call these floating garbage islands. Uh, here's a picture of one on the right, so it's not you know, an actual island. But what happens is there's these currents here, and it's going to pull the plastic and debris floating into one central area. And so here are different types of garbage islands that have been found in the ocean. So the impact of this on their organisms, um, well, some can get entangled in it, like we see with um, the little fish down here. We saw like that that turtle in the beginning where it's um, stuck in a piece of plastic. Um, some organisms um, mistake it for food and they eat it. So we get a lot of seabirds full of plastic. That's a seabird and tons of plastic in there. Here is a fish that's been cut up and the plastic that was found inside. Um, and then we get something called rafting organisms. So like barnacles and sea anemone that actually stick onto the plastic like you see here can then be floated and drift with the currents to other places and become an invasive species in the new place that they end up in. So obviously, a you know, solution to this would be to start to use less plastic. Um, try to use biodegradable products as much as possible. And then when we do throw away our plastic, we're putting it in the right places so it can be recycled and hopefully reused again. Um, a lot of cities have also gone to banning the use of plastics, like plastic bags, as you already know, um, plastic straws as well. And so people are starting to become a little bit more conscious about the, the way they use plastic. So we're not going to watch this video, but that's it. That was your last lecture of the year. Congrats. Um, there's some note checks for this, um, 12.4, I believe.